root vegetables are delicious so we love to eat them. It provides various nutrients that our body needs, but many of us are not aware of these things. There are root plants that can poison us if we do not prepare them correctly. Here are the top 5 poisonous but delicious root crops that we should know before eating them. Of all the root vegetables, the potato is not missing from the list. A food that is also easy to grow, but it needs a cold climate to survive. China is one of the largest producers of potatoes in the world. And countries with hot climates that are not suitable to grow potatoes, import into this country. India, the Netherlands and the United States are also some of the countries that produce potatoes around the world. There are some countries that consider potato as part of their everyday meal. It is rich in carbohydrates and potassium. It also contains various nutrients that our body needs. Potatoes are easy to prepare and cook. In fact, potatoes are our favorite root vegetable to add to our dishes. As a potato consumer, you should know this. Potatoes can cause poisoning in a person. Be careful when you are buying or shopping for potatoes in the markets. Avoid potatoes that are green in color or have sprouts. When the potato has been left for a long time, its skin will turn green, and small sprouts will grow. It already has glycol colloids, a dangerous poison that can affect the person who eats it. To avoid poisoning, just make sure the potatoes we prepare are fresh. It is better to plant them only when there are buds growing. Reminder, do not eat potatoes if you know it is unsafe. The root plant that is called cassava is now very common to us. Besides having a good taste, it is also very easy to cook. It can also add to the different types of cooking and recipes that can be done to make cassava even more delicious. Cassava can also be used as a flour ingredient in bread making. Cassava is a type of food that can be poisoned if you are not careful in its preparation. But how to avoid poisoning by eating it? According to many, the second skin of cassava contains poison, so it is better to make sure that no skin is included when preparing it. Meanwhile, according to experts, cassava contains cyanide, this is the poison from cassava and should not be eaten if it is not thoroughly cooked. So make sure that when you are cooking any kinds of recipes, including steamed cassava, make sure to cook it enough. Taro is not far behind when it comes to root vegetables that we often eat. It is one of the root vegetables that is commonly used in a variety of dishes. This plant is very easy to grow and can survive in muddier wet soil. There are also different types of taro. The giant taro or giant elephant ear taro is the largest. It is also called white taro, which is often used as a thickening agent, mostly in sinigang, a kind of Filipino soup dish. On the other hand, giant swamp taro can be seen on the sides of rivers or creeks, which are commonly used as plant decorations by gardeners inside and outside the house. Wild taro is a type of taro that can be eaten with its stem and leaves. The dish is called lawing by the people of Bicol in the Philippines. A taro dish with coconut milk. Taro is a good source of dietary fiber and carbohydrates. It is also said to be a good fighter and controller of blood sugar reduces the risk of heart disease, and contains anti-cancer properties. But to serve it, it is necessary to cook it properly. It is an itchy plant that can cause rashes and swelling of the mouth and throat when consumed raw. Taro leaves have acrid calcium oxalate, a poisonous natural compound which can be removed through heating or cooking. The best thing to get rid of this poison from this root crop is to cook it thoroughly.
Purple yam or ob is special among these root crops because of its rarity and uses. It originally came from the Philippines. It is called purple yam because of its color and is among many tuber or root crops which can be used as flavor for foods, especially desserts such as ice cream and cakes. The Philippines is famous for its obi halea, a Filipino dessert cooked with coconut milk, condensed milk and butter. You can also see some stores and restaurants selling varieties of obi flavored foods. Purple yam is in demand because it is one of the unique flavors used in different cuisines. Because of this, the supply of root crop quickly runs out, which causes its value to increase more in the markets. Purple yam is not only unique because of its taste, but also many nutrients can be obtained from it. This yam is featured as a source of carbohydrates, potassium and vitamins. There are two types of OB that can be eaten. One is from the hanging fruits that appear from its vines and the other one from the roots that grow under the ground. But like the previous root crops, the obi also contains toxins that can affect those who eat it. The way to get rid of its poison is by cooking it properly and avoiding eating it raw. How can this one kind of poisonous root plant be an alternative to rice? According to the elderly people in the Philippines, whenever there is a famine, a type of root plant that they call nami is their alternative substitute for rice. They still have to climb the mountain to collect it. The nami plant is a kind of yam with thorny stems and large, broad leaves. It is also called three-leaf yam because of the three-jointed leaves on each stem. Its roots are yellow when peeled. The preparation of this food requires extreme caution because it can poison anyone who eats it. A person poisoned by Nami feels a headache, dizziness and vomiting. But, how is the proper preparation for Nami? After being harvested in the rugged mountains, it is brought to the town and gathered to be peeled one by one. It is peeled manually, the sap of this root plant is itchy on the skin, so care must be taken not to apply the sap to different parts of the body. The same goes for using tools that can injure the skin. After peeling, it is thinly sliced to remove its toxic sap. The thinner the better and then soak it in salt water. Its traditional soaking is carried out in a small earthen pit lined with plastic sheeting. It will be soaked for a few days and then strained. After drying, it still needs to be soaked in the river and rinsed and soaked again several times. It needs to be soaked in water for a few days. This is how difficult the process of preparing nami is, but in return it is food. Hunger suppressant and rice substitute alternative. After a few days of soaking in the river, it will then dry. It can be cooked or spread out in the sun to dry. The very dry nami can be finely ground and made into flour to make different kinds of recipe. It must be properly cooked when served to avoid food poisoning. 